Hey guys, I've had a lot of people ask uh, for a better video of the electric bed lift, um, wanting me to do a, a video walkthrough. So I'm going to go ahead and go through what I did for this electric bed lift and kind of go through some of the different concepts. Uh, I know a there's a lot of different options out there in terms of bed lifts and I looked at just about every single one when I was doing research to try to figure out what the best way of doing this was. Um, so I'll go through that at the end of the video, um, but first I'm going to go ahead and go do a, a more detailed walk through this bed lift and show you guys uh, what I did. Um, so first things first, uh, I used the aluminum FMS uh, or aluminum T-slot as a lot of people call it, um, framing and it works really really well. The downside is obviously it's kind of on the expensive side, um, but it works really well in terms of giving nice structural support. Um, for the framing, um, you could also obviously use just regular aluminum welded together. You could use uh, you could use steel, you could use wood, you can use pretty much anything. Um, this is just the, the way that I did it. Um, if you do use steel, uh, it's going to be a little bit on the heavy side, obviously. Um, wood would work just as well, but really the guts of the system are probably the most important part. So you could retrofit this to make it work for whatever you guys wanted to do. Uh, whether it be a queen size bed or a king size bed, um, really whatever. Um, so I'll go ahead and get started here. So a lot of people ask me about the shaft. Um, it's just, I use just a three or a five eighths inch chromoly pipe. Um, you can use pretty much anything between uh, about five eighths to one inch. Uh, it's not gonna make a whole lot of difference um, once you get the, the worm gear motor on there. Um, another thing is if you wanted to go with a bigger shaft, you could potentially, I've had somebody suggest using a garage spring or uh, something equivalent in order to take off some of the load. Um, you could easily do that, but right now I've been able to use this to lift me on it all the way up to the ceiling here. Um, so I know it's, it's no short on power. Um, for the actual mounting of the straps, um, I did it by drilling a hole and I kind of did a little bit of a hodgepodge job on it. Um, it, it's not the best, but it worked pretty well. Um, I drilled a hole and then cut a slot, kind of like a keyhole. And what I did is I took the strap and I actually folded it over, sewed the edge, and then fed it into that hole and slid it over um, for each one. And then once I had it in there, I actually filled it with epoxy. Um, it was kind of a pain to do. Um, another way of doing it that I realized kind of after the fact would have been to just drill or just to cut a slot on each side pass the strap through it, drill a hole, and then put a rivet through it. And then um, before you put the rivet in, fill it with epoxy and then put a rivet in and then just cut it, trim it flat, and, uh, make sure it's flush on the other side. Um, really either way would do it. If you guys have any better suggestions on way to, ways to attach the strap, um, I'm all ears. Uh, I'm sure there's a lot of other options out there, whether that be, you know, weld a little piece of, of flat over the front and just have it spool around it. Um, really anything will work, but the keyhole and epoxy worked for me. Um, the motor, this is kind of how I did it. Just simple through and through bolts, um, drill the hole for the boss of the actual motor. Uh, it does stick through there a little bit. Uh, I did everything on a drill press just to keep everything neat, but you can, you can do it by hand if, if you're careful. Um, I assembled all the corners with the actual brackets. Um, you could also just do regular bolts through the ends. Um, I kind of went all out on this build where I actually did the corners in the round aluminum and I capped and then I put filler on everything. Um, I just wanted to be, to be really clean. Um, again, you guys don't have to do that. It could be quite a bit cheaper. Uh, I've had a lot of people ask me about the cost on it. Um, I did everything on this pretty balls out. Uh, I spent a lot of money on it um, just to make it really nice. And I think I spent somewhere between six to $800. I also have the bottom covering of this T2 plastic soffit to go on there too, but I left it open to, to show you guys first. Um, the guts of the system, you can get the worm drive motor, the shaft, um, and then the strap webbing, um, and you know, some various hardware for around $120. So $120 really isn't bad once you consider how much a lot of the other options cost. Um, and if you build a, say a wooden frame or you get some scrap metal for free and build a, another frame, uh, you're going to be able to do it a lot cheaper than six, $800. Um, really it's just whatever money you want to put in on the, on top of the main, um, the motor. Also, you have a solenoid. Um, I left the electrical panel open here so I could get to it and show you guys. Um, I, I just put a, a simple up and down toggle switch and then let me go ahead and pull this guy out. 
Sorry, it's gonna be a little bit of a rat's nest since I'm not done. Um, you can kind of see the solenoid back there. It's your typical winch solenoid. Nothing special about it, just a nice small one. Um, I think it was like a, a 300 amp or so. Beyond good enough, uh, works great. Um, I have it wired up to a battery right now because uh, like I said, I've still got quite a bit of work to do on the trailer. Um, I don't have the wiring done, uh, so I still have to do all the wiring. I do have the wire fed. I've got to figure out what to do with this. Um, uh, I, I figure I'll probably put it in one of those coiled compressor tubes or something, uh, or figure something out for that uh, in order to figure out what to do with the cord. But I did put a plug. You can just get these pretty cheap off Amazon. It's like a U-X-C-E-L-L. Um, they make a whole bunch of different electrical plugs, and I just put some sleeving over it. Mm -hmm. uh, that way, if I ever needed to take the, the bed down, uh, it'd be really easy to do. And I could just unplug it, drop it down, and undo it off the, the strap mounts. Okay, um, so moving on, uh, going back to the eyelets. One of the most important things is keeping the strap from rubbing up against any metal. Um, I used the aluminum T-slot and I wanted it to go through the actual sides. You don't have to do that. You can run it under it and just not do a cover on the bottom. The only thing you have to do is you have to have the strap go out and go over something smooth. Um, I used the straps that I took apart, ratchet straps and the, the round metal. Uh, I'll show you guys that in a minute here once I get it down, but you can get these buckles off Amazon, eBay, wherever else for pretty cheap. I use T-slot bolts um, or T-slot nuts and little bolts, little spacers and washers to hold this in place. It's nice and smooth. It keeps the, the strap in place. Um, uh, and of course I have the, the slot cut in the actual T-slot. Um, in order to cut the slots in the aluminum T-slot, I used a router. Um, you could, if you really wanted to, you could use a Dremel. Um, if you had have access to a CNC, that'd be great. Um, but again, that was just the way that I did it. Um, while I'm down here, I just have the actual shaft. I threaded a set screw that goes directly to the shaft. Um, that was just the way that I did it because there was enough meat on the chromoly to actually have that in there. And of course you use thread locker and everything else. Um, you could also weld on a flange and to hold it in place or um, just use a, a shaft collar and drill a through hole and just have it go through both. Either one would work really. All right, and on the other end, I have typical pillow bearing um, just held in with T-slots. Um, so looking at these guys, um, the, the aluminum extrusion is 2080. Um, this is 2040. You, again, going back to it, you can use whatever you want for the intermediate supports. I wanted to stick with T-slot so that I could do things um, like add in more of these little strap supports um, or the strap buckle slides in order to keep the strap in place. And the aluminum T-slot was just kind of the easiest way of doing it. Um, I went with 2040, I think, for the, the inner um, straps here. And then I also, for the, the top plywood is quarter inch or six millimeter. And the reason for that is because these slots are six millimeters wide. Um, I did have to use a router to trim off a little bit around the outside edges of the plywood in order to get it to fit in the slots on the top. Um, it, it wasn't too bad to do, but um, in order to do that, I did need to add little furring strips of the plywood here to keep it at the right level. So this plywood is actually sitting in that groove. Uh, and I'll show you that from the top view well, once we flip it over. Just another view, the corner brackets. Um, I added 2020 at the front in order to give it kind of a lip to, st to sit on. Um, and then another thing is they don't make plywood in full sheets the size of queen beds, obviously. So um, in the middle here, I had a couple just random pieces doubled wild, wide uh, with a double strip on the top, um, 40 wide, so that the seam of the plywood is actually right down the middle of that up here give you guys a better view so one half of the plow plywood is on one side and then another half is on the other side um, if you guys know somewhere to get a full consistent length queen size sheet of plywood go for it also you don't have to use plywood you could easily use you know, sheets of plastic you know or, or whatever else you guys can come up with all right um you see that I do have the E-Track boards here. Um, this is really just temporary. Um, I did this so that I could work on the bed and everything else. Um, and But in the end, I'm gonna actually take some of these brackets and probably cut them to make a nice little platform to sit on. 
so that when the bed drops down, it'll sit on the little E-Track brackets. It is strong enough to for me to actually lie on. I've tried me and another person lying on top of it. Um, the bed is strong enough hanging from the straps. However, it does sway around a little bit because it's basically no more than a swing uh, at that point. So you probably wanna make some kind of stops, whether that be just random brackets mounted to the wall to, just to catch it when it goes down really whatever you can come up with so at some point i will weld up some catch brackets uh once i'm done so um another thing i want to comment on is uh the height you, the really you're just limited by the diameter of how much this winds up uh you can kind of see that i still have about a centimeter maybe a little bit less above here in between the wood um at, at full height um you don't want to go any thicker otherwise it's going to start rubbing on the wood or whatever else you end up uh, having on the bottom if you go with the bottom mm. all right so I've covered the motor the motor again um it's a worm drive gear motor it's a 12 volt motor here's a zoom in of it um they use these for tarp motors on dump trucks um i've also heard that they're used on windshield wiper motors um, really you just need a a gear motor a uh, 12 volt gear motor or some equivalent in order to spin the shaft uh if you go with a, a shaft much bigger than an inch uh, like for whatever reason, uh, however you built it, um, you might need to go with a slightly high, higher gear ratio, but really that thing seems to do the job uh, with, with room to spare. So, um, Also, I bolted the individual members right through the outside because I didn't get enough of the angle brackets that would go on the inside. Um, the hardware is kind of a little bit expensive, so I kind of cheaped out on that. I wish I probably had just used the, the angle brackets, but... At any rate, it still does the job. All right, so I'll go ahead and drop this down here. So again, the switch is just an up-down toggle switch off Amazon. Up, down, and you can kind of hear the, the relay clicking. Again, it's running off a battery right now because I don't have the, the power wired up. It's a little bit low, uh, I have it on the charger, but uh, it, it still does the job for now. Right. Let's turn this guy sideways. comes in really well. Hmm. All right, so as you can see, um, this is the plywood on the top. Uh, you can kind of see how I uh, had to use a router to add just a little bit, make it a little bit thinner so it went in the slots easily. Um, again, if you use something different, you might not have to worry about that. I used uh, flush uh, bolts and T-slot nuts in the actual um, the support members. That was a real pain uh, to get all the nuts in there, placed in there, and, and get all those in there. You could easily just use some self-tapping screws or, or whatever else you happen to use. Um, all right, uh, let's see if I can. So um, originally, I actually had these guys. I had a an eyelet and a strap buckle strap um, adjuster. Um, and I found that it was not secure enough that it was actually sliding uh, in the buckle. Um, and I couldn't really find anything smaller than this. Uh, uh, there was uh, a supplier online that, that sold them, but they're huge. Once you add in the length of the adjuster in front of the actual thing, um, it takes up quite a bit of space. Uh, it took up a good four inches or so. Uh, my original plan was to just use the strap adjuster and sew it shut. But as I found, you really need to leave some a way of adjusting the straps. Um, one of the downsides with this method is as you as it winds up and spools on the actual shaft, um, if you have a whole bunch of weight on one corner, it'll spool a little bit tighter and it will actually be a little bit lower once it gets all the way to the roof. If you have a bed sitting on top of it, it's going to preload it with a, a good amount of weight and it shouldn't do that. I have yet to actually put a mattress on here and do it, but I put some weights on it and it seemed to uh, minimize that problem a little bit, make it a little bit better going up. Um, but once you get a nice soft mattress against the roof, um, it's going to squish that up against the top and it'll hold it in place. Uh, obviously I don't have anything up there right now to hold it in place in, in terms of safety, but that is on the list of things to do. Uh, I got to make some kind of little pieces on the walls, uh, just little catch pieces or hooks or something to, to be act as safety uh, once it's up. However, I did have it lifted all the way to the ceiling for four or five weeks and towed it around several times and it didn't budge an inch. So 
Um, it might not need a whole lot of safety reinforcements at the top, but squished against the mattress against the top, it's pretty snug in place. Mm -hmm. All right, um, so what I ended up doing instead of these um, to hold it, to mount the straps against the wall actually is um, I took a just, so these were Rhino straps, um, one inch Rhino straps off Amazon. Um, the width of this actually makes uh, a bit of a big deal. Um, the thicker that of this that you get, the more it's gonna be diameter wise as it winds up. So you wanna keep this as thin as you can get. Obviously you don't want it paper thin, you wanna make sure it still will hold the weight. Uh, but the thinner you get of the strapping, the better. Um, so I just got a four pack of the Rhino 12 foot or so, one inch straps, and I used the webbing from that. And then I actually took a strap and modified it. I just took off the hand crank part uh, and mounted it up here because um, what you do is once you have the bed down here um, There's no tension on the actual straps. So these you can actually twist them by hand I have them a little a little bit. I, I also have it adjusted right now So I don't want to mess with it But um, you can actually just spin these by hand and it's a great way to leave adjustment in here and still have it mounted and this took up actually less space than the strap buckle adjuster. So this was kind of the best way I found of doing it um, I still have to test it um, because I actually just finished putting those on today, um, but I'm pretty confident that it'll work and still leave room for adjustability. Um, so I think that's about it. Obviously, I am not done with the wiring yet, and there's still some things I still have to do, um, but so far it works really well. Um, I'm gonna hit on some of the other bed designs. Before I did this bed design, I looked at all of the other possible options. Um, I did quite a bit of research, bouncing back and forth, not being able to decide what I wanted to do. Um, and there's a, a couple options that you guys are probably also looking at, and I'm gonna tell you why uh, this design works the best. If you look at Happy Jack, um, they have one where it's a chain and sprocket up in the wall, um, and there's supports that go up, and there's a chain drive motor at the top with, with chains that goes down and it goes in these tracks. Um, Happy Jack, God, they are ripping people off. It's, what was it, 1200 or no, it was, I think it was like $1,700 for, for a bed, uh, don't quote me, but somewhere around there. Lots and lots of money for a pretty simple design, but they also require you to have pieces mounted to the walls, um, the tracks against the walls. So if you don't wanna spend that much money, there's a lot of do-it-yourself options. This is the cheapest one. I actually found uh, a couple campers and a couple of sprinter vans that started doing this design. And I looked up the Happy Jack specs and found a similar motor. That's how I, I was able to figure out exactly what kind of motors uh, they were using in terms of the, the, the watt ratings and, and whatnot. Um, the strap version doesn't have anything attached to the wall. Of course, you can add guide rails if you want. Um, there's nothing wrong, wrong with that to hold it in place going up and down, but it, it's really not necessary if you have some kind of catches at the bottom. Um, the downside with this method, uh, as I mentioned once before, is the strap spool on the bottom. Um, once you, if you have an imbalance, it may be slightly off um, once it does spool to the top, but this is still the cheapest method. Um, so I've heard of people talking about the winch method. Um, I looked at that and actually I was very close to doing that. Um, if you use a winch motor, you're gonna have to mount a winch somewhere, whether that be on the floor or, or on the ceiling um, or redirected somewhere. I was originally thinking of potentially routing it below the floorboards and having just a pass through and then going up to pulleys. Um, the downside with the winch method, um, the winches are very noisy. Um, the gears are super, super noisy. Um, they're not very fast, um, but the, the thing is with the cables, the cables make a lot of noise going through the pulleys, um, coiling up. Uh, it, they're just kind of a loud, noisy way to do it. And once you do that, you have to have the cables um, going up to pulleys and going down somewhere. Uh, I don't know if you've ever rubbed up against one of these wire rope cables with your hair, but if you're in bed, uh, those grab some hairs pretty good. They're not super comfortable to rub up against. Um, they're they're kind of a, a they're a good cheap way of doing it, but um, this just was a cheaper way of doing it in the end. Once you once you factor in the worm gear motor, the shaft, everything else being around say 150 bucks, uh, building your own frame, you're still going to have to do with the other methods as well. It's cheaper as well, and it's less invasive. Uh, you're not going to have pulleys and with all kinds of cables running all over the place. Um, the other thing is uh, another one that was men mentioned was the linear actuator. 
Oh, sorry, New Year's, people lighting off fireworks. <laughs> Um, another method was the linear actuator method, which took linear actuators, whether running down from the top or up from the bottom. Um, linear actuators are pretty expensive. They're very slow. Uh, if you've seen any of the YouTube videos with people using them, they're really, really slow going up and down. Um, once you figure out or figure the cost of the actuators, how slow they are, um, they're also not very far in terms of travel. Uh, with this setup, I was able to get all the way from the bottom all the way to the top, so that's seven feet, with room to spare. I probably could have gone another foot. And really with this method, you're only limited by how much width to the bed frame you leave for the strap to spool up. The linear actuators, you're only at best gonna get half the travel and half the speed. Mm. And you have to wire up all four of them uh, and hope that they stay in sync. So that was really just not the best method um, once factoring in, in that. Um, I've also seen ones where people have springs, like uh, like a coil spring kind of method, um, where you can actually do it by hand, but that does kind of take away the electric method. Um, let's see, I think that's that's just about all the electric. Oh, I've um, I've also looked at the garage lifts. The problem with the garage lifts, it's a, it's a similar setup to the winch or this. Um, but the garage lifts are not big enough for a mattress. So you will have to modify them in order to make them bigger. And a lot of people don't realize that that, is, that means you also have to get longer cables um, for, the full, for, for the full frame. Um, you actually have to take the, the frame and space it apart and either cut it and space it apart, or if it's multiple piece, you can space it apart, but then you have to weld in or bolt in additional beams. And a lot of the times, the one I saw had a beam going right down the center, right overhead where you'd be. Um, another one I saw was on this recently was on the side um, and when you're doing all that you're you're still gonna have the cables and pulleys um, exposed um, if you're in bed and you're near those straps with the cables uh, that goes back to the winch method your, your hair is gonna get grabbed by those little cables um, but it, they're those garage lifts are pretty cheap and pretty flimsy um, and when I say cheap I mean uh, they'll flex once you actually do get them bolted in uh, I was talking to another person who did that and he ended up scrapping the whole design. So uh, that's, I think that's all of the methods that I can think of off the top of my head. Um, if you guys think of any other ones, uh, there's probably a couple that I'm, I'm leaving out. Um, but really, oh, uh, another frequently done one is using the, the C channel tracks along the side um, and to move it up and down. And again, it goes, they use, use the winches um, since the winch method is, is pretty common. Uh, but I, I found you really don't need any kind of channel guiding tracks. Um, with this guy going, once you have it sitting on some catches in the bottom and you bring it back up to some, some safety stops or uh, you know little pins or, or something of that sort, there's no real need uh, for the tracks. So that eliminates extra weight, extra cost, and it also eliminates extra space off the side of the walls. Um, I'm pretty tight with that side by side and walking past it, getting out of the doors is almost impossible. But if there were tracks, I was afraid of my tires catching and stuff like that. Oh, um, there is one thing I forgot to show in the video. Let me get a better view here. So um, for the actual, the outsides, um, what I did, and I'll pull this up here in a second. Uh, what I did is I used buckle retainers uh, to hold the strap in place. Let's see if I can lift this up here. All right, so you can kind of see I made a, a nice little Velcro stop. Sorry for the I'm shaking the camera. Uh, a nice little Velcro pad here to keep it from scuffing up the walls. Uh, that would kind of eliminated the tracks. And then also, this is a better view, or I guess, ish. Let's see if I can move this. Here's a, a better view of what it looks like. So th this buckle right here, uh, the bottom one you're seeing is from a large ratchet strap. All you do is take the ratchet strap apart and it has holes in the edges where the or in the ends where the pins actually go to hold it in place. Uh, you just drill it out a little bit and put in, I think I put M4 bolts or so, through bolts. And then I put this guy up here, a buckle, stainless steel buckle guide um, with nice smooth edges to, to keep it guided. Um, because in the bottom, you can kind of see the, and this one, this slot was a little bit on the rough side. Uh, the slot that I cut for the, the strap. You wanna make sure there's enough clearance all the way around so if it floats to either side a little bit, it's not gonna rub on the metal. 
Um, so this way worked actually pretty well. Um, if I did not have the E-Track here right now, these guys would actually drop down in between the E-Track and sit almost maybe a quarter of an inch on either side. It's pretty much squeezed in the middle, so it doesn't move around a lot. All right, so I think that's just about covered it. Um, if you have any questions, I'm not on YouTube a whole lot, but I'll do my best to answer any questions that I see pop up. Um, also on the, the Facebook trailer, cargo trailer conversion pages. Uh, I check there various times from time to time as well. All right, well, um, I know a couple other people have been asking about the trailer in general. Um, since I've done a couple things, people have asked about um, the walls are LVP. Um, it's oak LVP from, I think it was Lowe's. Um, I would not personally, if I was going to do it again, I would not do the LVP again. Um, it costs a lot of money in order to put it up there um, because I had to use, uh, it was the PL Premium Fast Grab, which is about $10 a tube and it goes for about three pieces or so. It does not go very far. I used a lot of PL Premium Fast Grab to, to glue it to the wall. There might be another better way of doing it, but that's the way that I ended up doing it. And it's heavy. I did not, I very much underestimated just how much this stuff actually weighs. Um, uh, these are very heavy walls. If I was gonna do it again, I'd probably use some kind of sheet vinyl or something along those lines. Uh, another problem that I've noticed is I acclimated this LVP as per instructions. I let it sit in the trailer for a couple days, but uh, temperature fluctuations are kind of out of your control when it comes to a trailer. In a house, uh, it's relatively stable. Um, I did it with, when it was slightly cool, um, and some of the joints here, it's not bad, but there's there's some very small gaps and mismatches that weren't there, and as the, the temperatures change on them. So I probably wouldn't do LVP again. Um, I got the E-Track on the floor and that's just aluminum diamond plate. Uh, I got that off eBay for relatively cheap. Um, I went with the Ericsson E-Chocks for the, the, those are just E-Track chocks that snap into place and then the retractable straps for the side by side. Makes it a world easier tying this thing down uh, when I pull it inside. And then I've got the E-Track along the side walls. Um, that way, if, if anything I have against the side wall, I can strap them there. Um, the windows, I ended up just picking those off eBay, I think it was. Uh, I think they're all frameless. Uh, using the butyl tape to put them on was, was a bit of a trick, um, but not, not too terrible. Um, I did go with the mini split. Highly, highly, highly recommended. It is dead silent. When that thing is running at full power, it heats this place up in no time, it cools it down in no time. Um, and what I did is I built a box uh, just for the outside unit so it's concealed in here. Um, I insulated it on the inside as well. Um, and then I added a baggage door on the back. Um, and when we're using it, we just open the baggage door. Works phenomenally, keeps the outside unit out of the elements. Um, really just the best way of doing it. I tried the mini portable AC and it was not keeping up and it was a one tube so it drew the the air in. Uh, really is drawing the, the hot air in and it just couldn't keep up. Um, so the mini split is definitely the way to go. Um, here I'll run out to the other side and show you guys really quick. Oh, I don't have the key. Um, but I just added a baggage door from Rec Pro, uh, and it just opens up. And then under it, I actually went and cut an opening with a bunch of mesh so that the AC unit could breathe. And I found there was plenty of flow. Um, I added the various water fill, electric plugs. I think I just got all of them off Amazon. Um, I had some plastic tanks, plastic welded up. Um, really good way to go because a lot of the, the tanks were discontinued or out of stock because of this ridiculous market demand at the moment. Um, I paid about the same price. I think I paid about $300 for each one of the tanks uh, and I was able to get them completely customized to fit in between the beams of the trailer. Here's another view of the black tank squeezed in there it, it was a very very tight fit and then 
Uh, I've got some stainless steel strapping. I still got to put some on that one. That one's just pressed in place by friction at the moment. Insulated the lines. Great way to do the tanks. Um, about the same cost as the Rec Pro tanks, but much sturdier, much stronger. I was actually able to jack this entire trailer up using those plastic tanks um, with a with a two by four to displace the, the load. All right. Um, this was a, a easy way to mount the propane tank. I just got one of the the small propane tanks. I didn't go with the full size. Um, I just mounted some aluminum channel to the side and put some slotted some rubber tube. Worked really well. Um, this I'm gonna replace with some pipe straps to go around the outside. Some like ducting straps to hold that in place. The propane tank mounts for a lot of these uh, camping or trailer mounts are ridiculous they're like hundred and fifty dollars I think that was about thirty dollars or so it's a lot cheaper way of doing it um, once I'm done I'll have a refrigerator here got the water heater all the water plumbing and then I will have the microwave there and battery set up I've got some stuff jammed down there at the moment um, so I ended up going with the Dometic 320 toilet seems like a nice solid toilet it's porcelain at the top so it feels pretty natural got it kind of squeezed in there I uh, just finished installing those over break here and I haven't yet to try it, but um, these are acrylic panels. Um, you can get them from, I got them from Home Depot. They're a little bit on the expensive side, I'm not going to lie, but they look really, really, really nice. Um, just a regular shower pan, I think it was from Reg Pro or so. And then a Delta faucet. That was one of those oxygenetic ones, I ended up getting the, the black. Um, I've yet to try that. I'm curious how, to, how it'll work. But nice cheap, or, or nice, not not cheap, but nice, good looking, good quality shower panel. I uh, just got a regular, I think I got the black stainless steel, uh, sink just because it looked pretty decent. Yeah. And then this is actually, I've had a couple people ask me about this. Um, this is just an epoxy. Um, they make red carbon fiber, or it's carbon fiber with a metallic red twill through it. There's a couple of defects when I'm making it because it's the first couple times that I've done it, but really cool, really easily easy to do. It matches the trailer. Um, you basically just put down the layers of twill, put the epoxy over it, and clear coat. There's a lot of YouTube videos out there, but great way to get a good looking sink uh, or a good looking table for the sink. And then I've got another one that I gotta put over in the corner. Plumbing clearance is kind of tight, but it all fits. Water lines. And then as you can see, I still got some electrical work. Still got a good amount of work to do. Uh, I've had a lot of people ask me about the, the sealing material. The sealing is T2 beaded soffit. It's a, a plastic soffit um, that they use in a lot of porches. It is not a commonly known thing. Um, a lot of people are very are, have no idea that this exists. Um, it's, uh, I got it from Builder's Discount. Um, and I was able to get another couple places that said that they could get it. A lot of people don't even know that they carry this. They had to reach out to the suppliers. It's just another type of soffit. Um, if you find any builder supply warehouses, they'll they'll be able to look it up eventually if they, want, if they look hard enough. And it is lighter than the MDF panels by a lot. It's plastic, so it doesn't have to be painted. It's not gonna rot. And that was a big thing. I wanted materials that aren't gonna rot um, because I heard a lot of moisture issues. Uh, and then just the LED puck lights. I think those were super cheap off Amazon on the LED puck lights. And I think that's about it. Sorry this went a little bit long, guys, but this is uh, this is the trailer. I made the cabinets myself. It was not too hard either. And then the epoxy flooring, just the your standard epoxy. Uh, I put some metallic glitter in there, like red glitter and whatnot, to make it look good. But Anyway, uh, as you can see, I got quite a bit of ways to go. So um, that is the electric bed lift and all the other stuff. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions, let me know. Thanks.